section hike. And as you make your way to it, the trail eventually comes to the base of Round Top Mountain, the mountain that you've been staring at for a while, and runs along the western slope, putting the mountain to your right, and before we knew it, after a couple hours of comfortable and enjoyable woods walking, we started dropping elevation as we heard the sounds of a large river up ahead. Then we saw one of our very few landmarks on the day, the wooden footbridge crossing Brown's Brook. We are approaching the footbridge, which is uh, 4.2 miles in from our day, from where we started. And then uh, as we're crossing Brown's Brook, nice little footbridge right ahead of me. And that will mean we are 4.3 miles from Stevens Pond lean-to. And then uh, after the lean-to, not too far from uh, being back in Blue Mountain Lake at Lake Durant. Making good time so far today. The trail has been lovely. And this footbridge is pretty nice as well. A little bit of snow on the front of it here, but a nice footbridge over this pretty, pretty wide river. All right, and we are over. This brook is a good 8 to 10 feet wide, and the water was running fast, so it's a great spot to fill up your water bottles in this area. The footbridge runs probably 5 feet above the river, a well-made wooden footbridge. And again, major props and thanks to all the trail crews over the years who build these bridges for our hiking ease, enjoyment, and safety out there. We appreciate your hard work. Once we arrived at the footbridge, it marked our roughly halfway point to the Stevens Pond lean-to, where we plan to eat lunch today. Once at the footbridge, we were over four and a half miles in, and according to the map, we were 4.3 miles from the lean-to. And it felt like we arrived at this footbridge quickly, which is good because it means the hike up to this point was fun and enjoyable and fast-moving. So we had that going for us, which was nice. This next 4.3-mile stretch heading to Stevens Pond moves across the eastern slope of an unnamed peak to the left, with 3,800-foot Panther Mountain to the right as you wind and weave through the open, virgin hardwood forest for miles and miles, as all the leaves cover the ground everywhere, crunching your way in the dead leaves. The views around you don't tend to change too often here, so get used to what you're seeing on this stretch, because this is the scenery for the next few miles until you walk over a ridge with Stevens Pond down below in the distance. So we've been on the trail for a couple of miles here between the footbridge heading towards Stevens Pond. And uh, we could definitely go for a change of scenery. Everything has been pretty much the same for the last couple miles. Walking along the, along the incline, a lot of leaves. The woods are super open, but, uh, and there's a lot of trail markers, but there's some sections that are a little a little tough to follow and easy to get off trail if you kind of zone out a little bit, so pay attention to that. But if you do not see any trail markers, just take a minute or two to look around. Should be able to find one. This area was pretty cool though because you can tell the woods were logged a long time ago and have since grown back. So a lot of these trees are clearly new growth. And there was one section of hundreds and hundreds of beech trees that I remember finding particularly enjoyable. This four-mile stretch, however, continued on with the day's theme of Josh and I tripping and whipping ourselves with broken branches everywhere, every 10 feet. It was insane how many branches were scattered along the ground, hiding in the leaves, ready to trip and whip us as we walk over it. So annoying. And it seemed like the branches were only on the trail and nowhere else. The trail today goes in between a lot of decent sized mountains. There's Dunbrook Mountain straight ahead of us in the distance. Kind of the biggest thing we see at the moment. But a lot of 3,500 footers or taller. So it's a good amount of good sized mountains that the trail skirts between and around. A lot of leaves, a lot of leaves. One thing to be cautious of during this stretch, these woods on this part of the trail, which moves along this slope in a straight line for miles, are the type of woods where if you step a few feet to the right, 
the trail isn't visible any longer at all and everything looks the same. But then when you step two feet over back to your left and slightly change your perspective, boom, there's the trail and a trail marker and the path becomes obvious. So during this portion, if you find yourself losing track of markers or missing where the trail went, just stop to look around for a second, shift your perspective a little bit, and you should be able to spot a blue trail marker to get you back on track. I will also say that I think this stretch would be quite difficult to navigate at night because oftentimes the trail markers are far ahead, way past the light of a headlamp. So if you did get lost in these woods at night, I could see it being potentially very difficult to get back on track, and it's quite easy to get turned around. But that's just my two cents here. If you can't find a trail marker, just change your perspective a few feet and you should be able to find the marker. The trail also just continues along this slope in a pinpoint straight line that you've been walking on, so that should help too. We were around the point into this 4.3 mile hike where we thought, you know, I could definitely go for a change of scenery right now. So we are now here at a, the first trail sign that we've seen in quite some time. We are 0.6 miles away from Stevens Pond Lean-To, Lake Durant Campground, which is where we're going to end the day. It's only 3.1 miles from here. And then Route 28 slash 30, 3.4 miles. So I guess that's where we're actually going. And uh, Wakely Dam, 8.5 miles behind us. Cedar River Road, 7.7. .7, and Gould Road, 6.6 .6 behind us. Not a lot left in the day. We are cruising and uh, yeah, a nice little uh, section hike here on the N NPT. It does require multiple cars though, so it's a bit of a hassle, but not bad. It's a nice sunny day. So we kept walking along the slope, which occasionally became slightly flatter, and then back up to the slope a little bit before we walked up a ridge, and then we saw it. There it is. The beautiful blue and way larger than expected Stevens Pond shining and glistening in the sunlight down below. Just made our way up over this ridge, and now we have our first views of Stevens Pond. Yeah, right over the ridge, directly in front of us, Stevens Pond, and a blue mountain towering above Stevens Pond. Nice blue lake, blue sky. The woods are looking slightly different now, though slightly the same too. But uh, seeing that pond is a nice, nice boost. Almost at the lean-to, where we're going to sit and have a have a snack. I know the differentiation between ponds and lakes in terms of naming something a pond or a lake is arbitrary, but this pond to me seemed large enough to call it a lake. But it's very remote and it's awesome. As we made our way closer to the lean-to, we walked through the only muddy section of the day, which was maybe about 50 yards of trail in total, so it was no problem at all. Then around 10.05, we arrived at the biggest checkpoint for the day, Stevens Pond lean-to. We spotted the outhouse first, and then we saw the lean-to. We were four hours in with only a few miles left for the day, so it was a great place to stop and eat some lunch. So we are walking alongside of Stevens Pond, which is way bigger than I anticipated it being. Nice and blue, pretty big, and uh, we finally have a, a different vibe in the woods now as we're here, down here at the pond, so that's cool. Oh, I think we're almost at the lean-to. I see the, the outhouse here. Oh, and there's the lean-to. We have made it. Terrific. Oh, it looks like the lean-to is right on the water. 10.05, exactly three hours into our day. How's it look? Josh is scoping out the outhouse here. Yeah, it looks pretty decent in there. Yeah, thunder boxes are nice for the smell. It is remote back here, man. Walking up to the lean-to now, which at first glance looks pretty decent. Roof is covered in moss. I'm sure it's been around for quite some time. Nice campfire, which with fresh, uh, fresh wood. Looking at the lake, though the lake is down a little ways, but you can still see it through the trees, not too bad. All right, time to have a snack. The lean-to is in pretty decent shape, moss covering the roof, as many are, with a small fire pit directly in front. It sits facing the water, maybe 30 yards away, with a few large pine trees and a bank in between, but you can see the water nicely through the trees. This campsite also has a cool clearing and a tent site down on the water, with an additional fire pit, so it would be a great place to camp and spend a weekend, that's for sure. 
we opted to sit and eat our lunch in the lean-to. And with it only being a day hike, Josh brought some leftover cold pizza for lunch, and I had an amazing turkey sandwich on an everything bagel. The usual. So good. Way better than a cold, untoasted, or camp stove burnt, partially toasted bagel with some peanut butter. That's for sure. While we sat and enjoyed our lunch, the birds were going wild up in the trees here. So much wildlife action happening here at this very remote pond today. Birds chirping and singing to each other non-stop, everywhere, in all different directions. It was wild, actually. I've never heard the woods so loud. But we were into it. After we ate, we walked down to the small clearing on the water where we found the other fire pit area, which again would be a great spot to pitch a tent. Flat and soft and right on the water. It was nice being on the shoreline with the sun shining, the green trees around the lake, and no snow anywhere. Around 10.30, we decided it was time to get a move on, and we walked back up to the lean-to and packed up our bags. And while we were doing this, we noticed the lean-to register there, and we opened it up to check it out. While the seemingly fresh-burned wood in the fire pit would suggest otherwise, according to the lean-to register, nobody had been here since February. A solo winter hiker and a ranger who reported one to two feet of fresh snow, a nice ski in, and that he cleared out a bunch of blowdown. I like when the lean-tos have these registers and people write little notes about their day or night staying here. They're fun to read. So Josh and I wrote a little blurb about our day. Sunny, dry conditions. Day hiking the NPT to Lake Durant. O'Doyle rules. Josh and James. Now it was time to begin our afternoon. So we suited up and we started hiking for the final leg of the day. It's finished a beautiful, lovely snack slash lunch here at Stevens Pond Lean To. Really great spot along the water to hang out and just take it all in. There's also a fire pit down there as well, which is cool. So we're uh, heading back on the trail to go to Blue Mountain Lake, Lake Durant. We think it's either two and a half to three and a half miles away. That is the discrepancy between the map and the signage that we've passed so far on the trail. So somewhere in that ballpark, climbing up the ridge here, away from the the pond. And I will also say the birds and the wildlife here at Stevens Pond today are out in full force. As you walk away from the lean-to, the trail initially feels like a mini sidewalk. It's about six feet wide and slightly raised up above the woods around it, and it's pleasant. There was a good mix of hardwoods and spruce trees here. The map says the trail is 0.6 miles from Stevens Pond until the trail junction to the Cascade Pond lean-to, but it felt like we came to this sign only minutes after we left the lean-to. I feel like it's probably more like 0.3 miles than 0.6, but again, that seems to be the story in terms of the map and mileages on the trail. All right, we're coming up to another trail sign. Looks like this is the trail junction that we're gonna pass. Nah, it doesn't feel like 0.6 miles. Yeah. So the sign is saying uh, Lake Durant campsite two and a half miles from here. And then there's the uh, Cascade Pond lean-to a mile away on the left. Stevens Pond lean-to is saying 0.6 miles. Did not feel like 0.6, but uh, whatever, all right. We are uh, two and a half miles from Lake Durant. Banging right to stay on the blue Northville Placid Trail. Once at this final junction for our day, we were two and a half miles away from the Lake Durant campground. Our walk continued to be quite dry and very pleasant. The the trail was wide, some old logging roads, but mostly a dry, leaf-covered, 10-foot wide path through the woods. We were still dealing with these broken sticks tripping and whipping us constantly, though. But other than that, the walk was truly a delight. We're just cruising down the trail, heading towards Lake Durant. The trail is perfect. Nice and wide, very defined. Just like a nice trail through the woods that you'd walk your dog on, that sort of thing. Very obvious, covered in leaves. Sun is shining through the woods. We're probably about a mile and a half from... uh, Lake Durant. In fact, this entire day had that feel to it for the most part, and in my mind, before hiking any of the Northville Placid Trail, this is what I imagined the trail would be like. 
Our first section could not have been further from my initial vision of the NPT, but the whole hike today was exactly